In a previous video, I explained the basics of qualitative and quantitative research. Let's now take a look at what quantitative research is about in a bit more detail. So quantitative research is research done by, with numbers. And typically the outcome is some kind of number, a statistical summary or some kind of statistical test result. And then uh, the researcher would interpret the meaning of that test result within the context of research. There are three key questions when we uh, think about how we design our quantitative research. And the most obvious question is where do the numbers come from? So we have to measure something, we have to sample something, we collect our data somehow. We get an Excel sheet and then uh, that Excel sheet comes from somewhere. The second question is that once we have our data, an Excel sheet or uh, some kind of database or some other file, what do we do with that data? So what do we do with those numbers? And the most important question in quantitative research is actually, what do we, what do we want to say with the numbers? A typical result of a quantitative study would maybe look like this. So this is a, a, a regression table. It contains statistics from four different regression analyses. And then uh, the researcher would then interpret this and uh, make a call whether these statistics support their, their theory or not. Let's take a look at a statistic. So here's a statistic. We have the largest 500 Finnish companies in 2005. Women-led companies are more profitable than men-led companies. So what can we actually say based on this number? People would like to jump to the conclusion that naming a woman as a CEO causes the profitability to increase. But that claim is a causal claim and it requires a certain kind of research design for you to be able to say it. And sometimes we might be able to say something useful, even if we can't say that naming a woman as a CEO causes the profitability difference. So let's take a look at the four different ways we can use statistical data to make claims. The simplest way of using statistics or numbers is description. We can simply state that women-led companies are more profitable now. We are not claiming that the woman is a cause and we are making low claims about future profitability. And these kind of claims would be useful, for example, generating ideas. If we see that women-led companies are more profitable, we might start asking why is that the case? Is the difference because the woman is the CEO or is there some other factor that drives the difference? And then we could design a study to uh, address that question. Discount descriptive results might be useful also as they are. So for example, if I find that half of my students are failing my class, then that would have a direct implication for me. I should either uh, make sure that the students work more or I would have to make my course a bit easier, depending on which one is the, is the cause for failure. When we go one step further in statistical analysis, we have prediction. The idea of prediction is that if we observe one variable, we can say something about the likely value of another variable. For example, we could say that when we see that the woman is named as a CEO in a company, then profitability tends to go up. And this would be useful, for example, for investing. And we have all kinds of predictions and forecasting models in the world that are very useful. For example, we can forecast what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. That is uh, where we use statistical prediction. Importantly, statistical prediction is not the same as, as causation. The next level of sophistication in a quantitative study or quantitative claim is a causal claim. So we can say that naming a woman as a, a, pro, a CEO in a company causes the profitability to go up. And it is now important to understand the difference between predictive claim and causal claim. Because in a predictive claim, we are not saying that woman is the cause. In causal claim, if this causal claim is true, it has the implication that if we run a company, we should prioritize women as CEOs. But this predictive claim just says that there's a statistical relationship. It can be something else and it's not necessarily causal. One example that I like to use is that you can predict weather when you see that birds fly low. When birds fly low, then that means that there is rain incoming. So that's because of atmospheric pressure changes before rain. But we can't 
change the weather by shooing the birds away. So that is a purely predictive relationship. The birds flying low is not a cause of, the, uh, of rain, it just happens to predict it. And the same thing here, we might have another variable, like for example industry differences, that explain why certain women are high, why women are hired in certain companies and why those companies are more profitable. It helps us to predict future profitability, but it doesn't allow to say that we should name women as CEOs to increase profitability. The fourth level of a claim, which is very typical in quantitative study, is causal explanation. And the causal explanation differs from causal inference is that we don't simply say that one variable is a cause of another one, but we are also explaining what is the causal mechanism. And typically when we want to make this kind of uh, causal explanation claim, then we would need to design our study to measure various different causal processes. So simply observing that women, uh, female CEO and company profitability correlate does not allow us to make any explanations. It's just a correlation. The explanation would have to come from somewhere else and then we test those other explanations. For example, the explanation of how or why women-led companies are more profitable could come from a quant qualitative study where we go and see how women lead the companies. Most of the research in management or business studies are here focusing causality because we want to tell managers what to do to increase profitability, increase growth, or achieve some other positive organizational outcome. Statistics typically gets us to the causal inference, and then it's up to the, uh, the researcher's imagination and understanding of prior theory to come up with the explanation. So statistics allows to infer causality, but the explanation typically comes from somewhere else, maybe qualitative studies. There are a couple of things that quantitative researchers care a, a lot about. The causality is one, and to demonstrate causality, we must demonstrate these uh, three conditions. We must show that the cause and effect are somehow associated. The cause comes before the effect, that's the second condition, and then we have to eliminate rival explanations. Go going back to the CEO gender example, it might be that certain industries are more likely to have women CEOs. It might be that those industries are also more profitable. And that would cause a correlation between CEO gender and profitability without the, the women CEO actually being the cause of the profitability differences. We have two strategies for eliminating rival explanations. One is experiment. They are rare in, in business studies, particularly if we study something on a company level like in strategy. And the more common is uh, statistical modeling. Typically we use some kind of a regression analysis where we model alternate explanations by including other variables. So for example, if we want to control for the alternate explanation that the, the effect between or correlation between CEO gender and profitability is not because women are better leaders, but because certain industries tend to hire women more, then we would construct a statistical model that includes our CEO gender and industry as explanatory variables and then profitability as the dependent variable. Another thing that quantitative researchers are really focused on or two other things are measurement and sampling. So this is relates to where our data comes from. And measurement relates to how do we quantify things. And if we think about profitability, that's a theoretical concept. How do we quantify profitability? The most common way to quantify profitability is to take an accounting number like return on assets and use that as our measure of profitability. How do we quantify our CEO's gender? We don't do medical exams of all of the of our CEOs, but what we do instead, we look at their first names. And if the CEO's first name is something that is common for, for women, then we would say that that's a female CEO, otherwise that's a male CEO. Another one is sampling. So sampling, if we think about our data as an Excel sheet, measurement tells us what are the variables and the columns in the Excel sheet. Sampling is what are the rows. So the rows are our observations. Like if you have companies, what kind of companies do you want to sample? Do you only want to sample from Finland or do you want to sample in, in many other countries and so on? Do you have individuals? And sampling and measurement are two most important things that, that determine the quality of your data. 
So you have to measure the right things and you have to measure them from the right units of analysis, like right companies for your research question. We have uh, four main designs in quantitative studies that singleton traits present. And I'm using this, uh, present this uh, categorization instead of the one from the course book, because this is a more comprehensive. And uh, the four designs are experiments. And it can be a laboratory experiment, typically like you would invite students or some other subjects into a lab to do some kind of study. Or it could be a field experiment where we run an experiment in the field. There are two important features in experiment. One is randomization. So we always randomly assign half of our participants to be in the treatment group and other half in the control group. So if we test a new organizational policy, the policy is implemented to one half of the sample and other half remains with the old policy and then we compare the difference after, after a certain time. The randomization makes the groups perfectly comparable to start with. So this is the strongest form of research designs and it, it can give us strong evidence of causality. The uh, biggest weaknesses of experiments, particularly running, if they're running the lab, is that they are not applicable to all resource problems. So for example, if you want to study how companies set strategy or whether differentiation makes a company more profitable, you can't really do that experimentally. You would have to uh, buy all the companies in the economy, basically. The second thing is that if you run a lab experiment, so lab experiments are typically run with students, there's a question of generalizability or external validity. To what extent do those results from, uh, from the lab generalize to real companies? Then we have three designs that are observational designs. And we call this observational because the researcher in this design is just a passive observer of data. Whereas in experiment, the researcher changes the causal variable, the cause we manipulated. Here we simply observe what happens in the nature. Survey is probably the most well-known research design. So survey is basically sending out questionnaires to people. So it's asking people questions and they will provide us the data. It can be uh, paper for surveys, electronic surveys, or perhaps some kind of uh, telephone interviews. These surveys are useful because it's very cheap compared to experiment, for example, to collect a large sample, let's say 200, 300, 500 people. And it doesn't cost uh, a fortune to do that. It would be very expensive to do an experiment with 500 people. Then uh, another advantage is that you can pretty much ask anything from people. There are very little constraints on what we can study. We could, for example, uh, ask what, if a company is doing differentiation or not, and then we could observe their profitability. So we can study company level things and not only individual level. Field research in this classification refers to going to a field and observing something. I was once involved in a study in marketing where we were studying if uh, these automated checkout places in grocery stores actually increase the sales or not. And uh, what the researchers did was that they went to the store and they observed what kind of people went to those self check-ins and, and at what time was there, how much the, the queue on the, at the normal cashier affected uh, how many people went and did self checkout. So you basically go to, and field, go to the field and instead of asking people, you make structured observations. So that is field research. In qualitative studies, this book uh, by single demonstrates also uh, classifies all kinds of qualitative case studies into field research. So that's mainly based on observation. And uh, the advantage of this is, is uh, generalizability. If you observe something that happens in the field, then that for sure generalizes to the field as well. The disadvantage is that uh, field studies are hard to replicate because they tend to be fairly unique and it might be difficult to gain access to a similar setting for replication purposes. And then we have archival records. The archival records is uh, a kind of study where you uh, take data that is collected for some other purpose and then you use that data for your research. Perhaps the most typical form of archival data research is using all kinds of company level databases. Like we have databases that contain accounting figures, we have patent databases, and we could, for example, merge the patent database with accounting data from um, tax filings, and then uh, 
study whether innovativeness increases company performance. The advantage here is that it's uh, fairly cheap to get uh, a large amount of data. The disadvantage is that sometimes you don't know anything, you don't know whether the data are of high quality or not, so it's very difficult to say how the data were originally collected, and also the data that you want to have might not be available in any, any database. All right, so these are the four main designs. Experiment, you manipulate, and uh, you have a treatment and control group, you observe the outcome. Survey, you ask questions from people, either telephone, email, or web form, or some other way. Field research, you don't ask people questions, but you observe and make notes of what people do. And then archival records is using data collected for some other purpose for your research. And this is how our, our book explains the different research strategies, research designs in, in the quantitative studies. And the book makes uh, experimental research as one of the categories. And this is, uh, this is what all books basically do because experiments are unique in their approach to causality. Then we have cross-sectional and longitudinal. And this cross-sectional and longitudinal is an important difference because Typically, when you want to make a causal claim, you want to measure the cause before the effect, and for that you need longitudinal data. But for practical reasons, and uh, because of longitudinal studies are expensive, many studies are cross-sectional. If you think about doing a survey, it's a lot easier to just send out one survey where you ask all the questions instead of sending one survey now, and then sending another survey a year from now and hoping that the same people respond. Then case studies and comparative case studies are typ not typically used in this sense in quantitative uh, research. It's mostly about whether you do a longitudinal or cross-sectional that is uh, useful from this table. All right, to summarize, quantitative research is research done with numbers, and we have three important questions. Where do the numbers come from? Experiment, survey, archival data, or field research. What do we do with the numbers? Typically some kind of statistical analysis. And then most importantly, what do we want to say with the numbers? Typically in business research, we want to make some kind of claim that one variable is the cause of another one.